Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Origin Threadcraft, the podcast. Um, this is my first time recording a video. Um, it's going to be a podcast about knitting, crochet, other crafty endeavors, um, but it is my first one. I have not edited a video since I was in journalism school, so that would be like 2013. Um, so I've got high hopes for it, but we'll see how it goes. If you're not familiar with knitting podcasts, um, like you're a friend from my real life, this is kind of a weird niche thing that people do on the internet. Um, I really like to watch knitting podcasts. I, Dave always makes fun of me because I always have one going in the background. Um, I love knitting traditions. I watch like every episode she puts out. I love Brooke Willow. Um, pretty much addicted to Andrea Mallory's. Um, so I know that there are people out there who do this every week. And I was like, I'm always knitting. I love talking about my knitting. I love watching other people talk about their knitting. Um, so I just kind of wanted to be a part of this zone. So that's what this is. That's my little introduction. We'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Comer sweater um, by Kydri, Kydri. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, um, but I will put a link to her Ravelry both in the show notes below and maybe up on the screen with a picture of the pattern if I'm crafty enough with the, the editing software. Um, but it is just a basic top-down raglan construction. Um, it has a little bit of German short row shaping in the neck, so then the neck sits higher in the back than it does in the front. It is made with We Are Knitters, the wave wool um, in the color Colorado. Um, which is sometimes kind of hard to get, so I don't know what their stock is at the moment. Um, for my size, I knit the size medium in kind of a cropped length, long sleeves. Um, I bought six balls for it. I actually only ended up using five, um, so I think I could have definitely gotten away with using less yarn. I also Think I could have tightened up this gauge considerably because there is quite a bit of positive ease um, so I could have either maybe got away with a small or um, gone down a needle size so I think I probably could have got away with less yarn but I love this sweater I love the feel of it it's quite a rustic yarn um, so if you're not familiar with We Are Knitters um, their petite wool the wool and the wave wool I would say is more their, their rustic 100% wool line um, and the wave wool in particular, you can see, is kind of a thick and thin. So it makes this really interesting texture. Because um, this is just stockinette stitch, so this is just knitting in the round. There's no special texture stitch involved. Um, and it makes a really, like, wavy, thick and thin fabric, which I really like. Um, this is the second sweater that I knit with this particular yarn. Um, my first one, which was also my first sweater that I ever knit. Um, I've been knitting for like 20 years, basically since I was six or seven. Um, but I never knit a sweater <laughs> until this past spring, so spring 2021. Um, and now I'm on a kick, um, which we'll get into here in a bit. But this was my very first one. It is the Gamma sweater also available with We Are Knitters. Um, it is a kit that you can buy with them. Um, I don't think you can get the pattern just on its own. Um, most of their patterns you have to either buy as a kit or wait until they do a um, pattern sale, but it's honestly super simple. It's um, knit flat and then seamed, and I did not do the best seaming. I mean, you really can't tell. This sweater is super pilled. I wear it all the time. I need to, to wash it and also deep pill it. Um, but this is like my ultimate winter sweater. I wear it all the time for walks with the dogs. I sleep in it. It's super, super warm, super, super cozy. Um, and I'm not sensitive to natural fiber at, our, at all, but it doesn't feel scratchy. Like, especially for a 100% like rustic wool, it really is, is very soft. Um, and then you seam it together, seam the sleeves to it, it's a drop shoulder, 
construction and then there's this like mock turtleneck neckline um which i love the silhouette of when i wear it um i don't love the feel of it right up on my neck um that is part of why i wanted to do the kind of top down raglan on this one one because i didn't want to seam it i hate seaming it i didn't want to pearl a lot so i wanted to knit it in the round and the neckline this one does bother me a little bit if i don't have anything else on my neck um for some reason most people even if you're not sensitive to, to woolly wools your neck sometimes is a little bit um and i do have that issue a little bit with the sweater um i knit it in the gray tie-dye color again it's the wave wool from we are knitters gray tie-dye color um i believe that's the same color that's used on the sample on the actual kit page um yeah it definitely is because i saw it and i was like i want that exact one and they were sold out of Colorado at the time. Otherwise, I probably would have bought that one for my first one. Um, I did do a gauge swatch with it for my Comer sweater. Um, so I chewed a little bit. But I did, I wanted to do the swatch in the round since I knew I was going to knit the sweater in the round. So I just used my leftovers from, from this one just in case I didn't have enough um, out of the Colorado colorway. But I ended up having way more than enough. So... Again, I think next time if I were to knit these sweaters again, I would probably just get five balls instead of six. Um, so that is the Colmer sweater and the Gammer sweater in the We Are Knitters, the Wave Wool. And those are my first and third sweaters respectively. So in between the first Gamma one, which is again knit flat and then seamed, and then this one, which is the top down raglan, I also knit this. So this is my second sweater. It was my first sweater in the round. It is, well, let me just say who it is first. It's the Quinn Pullover um, and it's by Originally Lovely. And she originally did hers with Lion Brand yarn. Um, I believe I wrote down what Lion Brand. So she used Lion Brand Retweed, um, which is a worsted weight yarn. But for mine, I used Knit Picks Swish Worsted. Don't mind this end that's sticking up over here. Um, the Swish Worsted, which is kind of a lighter worsted, um, almost a DK. They technically have a DK, um, but I think their worsted is somewhat on the lighter end as well. Um, but it is a 100% superwash wool, um, and I knit mine in the color Haystack, which this lighting isn't the best, but it's kind of like a green, yellow, heathered color. Um, and all of the cables on this sweater are one buys. So, um, Caitlin, the designer, actually did that intentionally so that you can knit it without a cable needle. Um, I did use a cable needle with mine just because I'd never um, tried that technique before and it felt more comfortable for me to do so. Um, but if you are anti-cable needle, um, this is a good sweater for you. It is knit in the round from the bottom up. And then there is, um, I'm not sure if there's short row shaping on the Mac. Um, it's been a while since I knitted this. I knitted this last spring. Um, I, cast, I got the yarn for my birthday in late April, and then I cast it on over the summer and finished it like June, July. Um, so I don't really remember what the shaping is in the neck, but I know it has this beautiful fold down neckline um, that just really stays into place well. It holds its structure well, and I love wearing it. Um, the only thing I would maybe do differently with it is I did do the tubular cast on um, for, for the bottom ribbing. Um, and I find that after I've blocked it and worn it a lot, it kind of warps a little bit. It doesn't like hang flat. Um, that also might just be the fiber choice that I use because it is a like super, super wash wool. If I had something a little more grippy, it might um, like hold its 
hold its shape a little better. Um, but I kind of wish I had just done like a standard bind on it because it is top up. I can't just like unravel it really quickly and like re-knit it. Um, I'm gonna try to like apply it again um, a little more aggressively this time and just see if that helps at all. Um, but that is my only qualm with it. Other than that, I would 100% knit this sweater again. I very well might knit this sweater again this year. I love it. I wear it all the time. It's like definitely one of my go-tos. Um, and I was really proud of it because it was like my second sweater and it's quite ambitious. So I was really excited about that one when it was all done. I think I'm going to talk about the beanies next. So I am both a lifestyle knitter who knits a lot for myself as well as a finished object knitter. Um, I do sell my finished objects, specifically my hats and my beanies and my like um, kind of accessories, um, both on online on my own website and on Etsy and then at craft markets. I do not sell sweaters. <laughs> um, I might maybe do some like custom ordered sweaters eventually. I don't know. It's a little bit difficult because um, the people who understand the value of a hand knit sweater usually can make it themselves. And then the people who would actually want to purchase one don't necessarily understand the cost of the yarn and the time and the skill set that actually goes into like knitting a garment that um, fits you well and that you like to wear. So for right now, I just do accessories. Um, but I have knitted quite a bit this year, um, probably about 100 beanies and hats. Um, I know that Justin, well not like this calendar year, I know in January I knit um, 27 hats and then four like headband things. Um, like I knit these twist headbands, um, which are double knit. So they are super, super warm, super cozy. They give you that little like kind of knot in the front. Um, this pattern is the Gala Twist headband. I'm not totally sure who is the designer. Um, I will put it in the notes below and, and maybe off to the side here. Um, but I do love it. And it's knit in Malabrigo. Um, Mecha, which is their like single ply heavy worsted Aran weight. Um, so I knit four of those, well five technically because that one's for myself, I knit four for the business and one for me. And then I knit a ton of hats and I have one kind of exciting one to show you. So if you're familiar, if you're on Instagram, specifically like in the knitting sphere, you might know Smeeny Beanie Knits. Um, her name's Shireen. I love her page. She was a huge inspiration for me to like start selling my knitwear and um, just kind of start getting into this space in general. Um, and this is her her hat pattern. Um, it's called the Winterfell Beanie and I just love it. It's one of my really popular styles when I when I sell my hats at craft fairs. Um, and it's usually knit with Malabrigo Rasta which if you're familiar is this beautiful single ply, super bulky yarn, um, hand dyed small batch colorways. So really beautiful color pooling. Every skein's a little bit different, even when you get the same colorway. Um, and I just love how they turn out. But my mom actually won a giveaway earlier this year. It was around Thanksgiving um, on Instagram and she got sent this beautiful um, hand dyed yarn. It's from Moss and Wand. Oh, that's gonna be reversed because I'm on my phone, recording on my iPhone. Um, but it's from Moss and Wand, hand dyed yarn, um, and it's the autumnal light colorway. And it is a plied yarn. So it is a two ply, super bulky. You can kind of see them. And I wasn't sure how that would work out with a specific pattern because I'm used to using the single plies, but I love it. Um, so there is that. I actually used two colors for the neutral because um, I didn't have enough of the pure ivory. So I used a little bit of, I think that's whole grain. Um, 
maybe it's fog, I don't know. If I use two neutrals there, you can kind of tell, but I, I think it works, and I think it works with the pom-pom color. Um, so that one I'm really excited about, and that will be in the shop in my next update. Um, I just have to put a tag on. I've palmed all the knits, I've got them all knitted. I need to like sew my little tags on the bottom and basically take photos, um, which I should have done today, but I decided I wanted to do a podcast instead. So here we are. And then I have one more finished object and this one I'm really excited about. Um, I did do a make nine for 2022. Um, I'm going to try to hold myself to it. I'll put up in the corner like my what I'm planning to do for the year. Um, but this is my very first one completed for my make nine and I love it. So this is the Zweig by Caitlin Hunter of um, Boylan Knitworks on Ravelry and Instagram and her own website. Um, and I know that this sweater was really popular a few years ago when it first came out. Um, but like I said, I really just started getting into the knitting community in like 2020. Um, even though I've knit my whole life, I was very much like stuck in scarf land. Um, so I really just started kind of expanding my skill set um, since 2020. And... I have only just started knitting sweaters this last year, so this one was new to me, and I love it. You can see the lace yoke there. There is this like really beautiful star stitch texture on the body. Um, this is not blocked yet, so a lot of the texture, and especially the lace yoke, will um, show a little better after I block it, but I just finished it last week. Um, I cast this on for Christmas. I like caked up the yarn Christmas day and kind of treated myself that weekend to just working on a totally selfish knit. So like nothing for the business, just for me. Um, and I finished it January 30th. It was my goal to finish it by the end of January. And I finished it with a day to spare minus blocking, which I'm hoping to actually do later today. So maybe next time I can show you the finished one. Um, but I love it. A couple of things with this. The yarn that I used um, is from a dyer who is local to me. I live in um, central Ohio, kind of the greater Columbus area. Um, and this dyer is actually from Cincinnati, which is southern Ohio. Um, but it's about an hour away. Still a local Ohio um, dyer and I love her stuff. Um, so this is McMullen Fiber Co. And so the colorways that I used for it are from her Canyon collection, which she does still have a little bit available on her website. Um, she does, she's an indie so obviously she does kind of limited release stuff. Um, but I do think she has both these colorways still available right now. And for the body, I did the copper color. And these are both just in her um, sock base, squishy sock base. Um, so it's 80-20, 80% merino wool, 20% nylon. Um, ideal for socks, but I did kind of want this sweater to be really strong um, and kind of like day, day to you, day use sweater without having to worry about it um, getting too stretched out. So I did want the nylon content. Um, she also has a base that's her posh sock base um, that has like 10% cashmere in it. It is crazy soft, crazy beautiful. It is a little more expensive though. Um, and so I just, with this first one, I just went with the regular squishy sock. Um, but that is a base that she offers in the fingering weight. And then the color for the yoke, which I still obviously have a full skein of, um, is Red Rock Canyon. And I ordered four skeins of the copper and two of the Red Rock Canyon, knowing that I would have some left over, um, but I wanted to put it into a shawl. 
um, and I really only used about two and a half skeins of the copper and less probably about half of the, the yolk colorway um, so I think I definitely could have got away with less yarn um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to cast on for the medium or the large because um, I knew I wanted to have like a good amount of positive ease in it and I started to cast on for the large and I actually ripped down before I even got to the lace yoke and, and cast on the medium because I could just tell that it was going to be way too big. Um, so this is the medium unblocked. I did try it on. It fits like perfectly. So I'm going to try with my blocking to not be too aggressive because um, I really like the fit of it right now. I'm going to bring out the lace a little bit um, with some blockers. And other than that, I'm just going to try to be super minimal with it um, because I love the fit of it now. So again, that is the Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. And hopefully next time you can see it fully blocked or maybe I'll even wear it. Who knows? So that is kind of it for my finished objects. I think I probably have more um, that I've knit in this past... Well, I definitely have more that I've knit in the past year. Um, but I figured that was good to start with today and I have a few more things to talk about yarn wise but I'll kind of put that at the end in a separate acquisitions piece um so we'll just go right into whips so my main whip right now is a baby blanket um it is not a secret so I feel okay talking about it here um I don't know if Danny's even going to watch this podcast, but she might. Um, so it's not a secret. She already knows about it. She chose the yarn for it and the pattern. Um, so she knows. And this is the Hem Blanket? Helm Blanket? Not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Um, I'll put a photo of it up here. Um, it is a pattern available on Ravelry from Lay Knit. Um, but it's this kind of lace pattern. You can kind of see it there. I think it's going to open up a lot when I block it. Right now it's kind of hard to see, especially with the um, variegated color. But she wanted it in this kind of blue and orange tie-dye. Um, they don't know the sex of the baby yet. They're waiting to find out until it's born. So she wanted something very like gender neutral and kind of modern. And I just wanted to try this lace pattern. So <laughs> that's what we did. Um, I'm knitting it with Allegheny Fiber Arts. Um, it's their fingering weight base. It's the colorway Desert Oasis. Again, it's gonna be backwards, but you can get the idea. Um, she does have an online presence. I don't think she has anything in her shop right now. She's very small batch. Um, but it is 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. Um, and it's really soft. I wasn't sure how it was going to feel about the bamboo, um, whether it was going to be kind of splitty. But it's actually worked out really well. And it's super soft, super squishy. Um, I don't think it'll be irritating to the baby at all. And because it is superwash and because it has the nylon content, um, she should be able to wash it okay. Um, and I think I can trust her to lay flat to dry and not like throw it in the, the dryer. I was, I'm going to give her care instructions, obviously, but she can be trusted. So she is very knit worthy and I'm about a third of the way done. I started it last Monday. Um, today is Monday. So about a weekend, about a third of the way done. There was a snow day in there. Um, so I was able to make pretty good progress on it. I am obviously not a professional knitter. This is my hobby. I do sell my finished knits as a side business, but my full-time job, I'm actually a bike technician and um, a hard goods sales specialist for an outdoor retailer. So I do work full-time. Um, so I'm pretty proud with this amount of progress because it is on size three needles. Um, it's fingering weight and it's lace. So it's quite um, fiddly and tricky. So I'm hoping I might have that done maybe by the next episode as well. I'm hoping to have it finished by the end of the month. Um, I think her due date's in, in March, so it would be nice to have it done for the actual due date, um, but we'll see. 
and I ordered three skeins of that. Um, I basically just finished the first one, so I think I should have plenty of yarn, but it's not a hard rule when it needs to be done. I'll think I'll just, once I get down to, to where it's close to done, I'll just call it there and do the, the six or 12 inches of garter, however, not inches, rows, rows of garter that it calls for and just kind of call it there. Um, so that is my main whip. I do try to knit fairly monogamously, at least on the big projects. Um, obviously I pretty much always have a hat on the go for the business, but that's kind of unto itself. I mean, I usually finish that in the same session that I start it. So in terms of works in progress, I try to keep only one or two going at a time. Um, I did kind of break that rule because I have kind of an ancient whip here to show you. I literally still have it in the bag that I, like my project bag that I keep it in. Um, this is kind of embarrassing. It's really cool, but I'm just a little embarrassed by how long I've had it on the needles and it's literally dropping stitches as I pull it out. So that's good. I'm not too worried about it. I'll be able to get back on. Um, it is a selbu mitten. So it's a traditional Norwegian knitting. I do have the left one already finished, except for the thumb gusset. Um, and I've actually already made the same pattern. It is the Selbu Mitten pattern by Ellie of Skandier Knits. Um, I did get it from Ravelry. I'll put a link to it in the description box. Um, it's a great pattern. When I knit it the first time, I did it with white as the main color, like the cream as the main color and the red for the little Selbu roses. Um, and I had plenty of yarn left over, so I was like, oh, I'll just reverse it. And I wear those all the time. They're my main mitten in the winter. And I did notice that my gauge on them is a little bit loose, um, especially being a merino. It did kind of stretch a little bit. Um, and I want one a little bit smaller. So I did go down a needle size for this pair and I'm excited to have them. I don't really know why I haven't finished it yet. I think I just kind of kept it in its bag and I forget about it, um, but it'll get done eventually. They are on double point needles because um, I started it last year. I don't really use double points anymore. I pretty much just use magic loop for everything. Um, but that's because I started it last year. And the yarns that I'm doing that with, um, the kind of cream color is Arbor by Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and it's in the Degas colorway. It's 100% American Tar Heel wool. And the red colorway, let's see if I have it in here. Yeah, I do. It's the Neighborhood Fiber Co. Um, colorway is Bolton Hill and it is the Studio DK. Um, and I think they're out of Maine, which is kind of interesting. I bought this yard in Texas. Um, we used to live in Austin, Texas for two years. Um, and there's a yarn shop there called the Hill Country Weavers. And that's actually where I bought this yarn and where I knit my first pair of Selby mittens with it. Um, so that would have been in 2020, I guess. And, but these are both East Coast yarns. So, I don't know. I thought this one's kind of funny because my partner is actually from Bolton um, in the UK. And so he just thought it was kind of funny that the colorway was Bolton Hill. Hopefully those will be done for next time as well. Again, I don't really know why I haven't finished them yet. I've just been like, that's the sound of the zipper <laughs> in my bag here. Um, yeah, my bag is literally dusty because it's just been sitting in the corner of my room with unfinished cell mittens in it, but maybe for next time. I did want to talk a little bit about this book. This is cell mittens. The Norwegian name is cell and it's by Anne Bardsgaard. Um, and it's a phenomenal resource. If you have any interest in like Selbu, not just the mittens, but like the Norwegian knitting tradition, um, this book is like phenomenal. 
Um, in fact, Ellie from Ski Deer Knits, who wrote that pattern, um, she credits this book heavily with the, the design inspiration. Um, and even going through it, I can tell like kind of which charts she used, but there's 500 charts, 35 pattern constructions. Um, and I think the most interesting part of it is it goes really deeply into the history of Selbu Mittens and like the impact that it had on the Norwegian economy um, in like a very difficult century. Um, so I think that's just a really cool story, um, especially now as we're seeing like this kind of resurgence in handicraft and like self-reliance um, in a difficult time, I think very, very cool read and very, very cool resource. It is out of print right now. Um, I think they did a little bit limited run, so it's kind of hard to find. Um, I bought my copy from a small yarn store. Um, I bought it from Cowgirl Yarn in Laramie, Wyoming. They do have an online website. I don't know if they have more copies, um, but that's how I found a copy. It was just Google, Googling small little local yarn shops and just seeing if they had it in their inventory. Um, I think it is back ordered on Amazon and on thrift books, but feel free to check. Um, she did just come out with a new one this year, um, Sell Blue Patterns. So a little more sweater garment oriented, but similar vibe. Um, I don't have it yet. I did order it um, from thrift books. So we'll see when it arrives. Um, maybe I'll have it for the next episode and I can tell you how different it is from this one. Um, but the Silbu Butter, the Silbu Mittens book is awesome. Highly recommend. And that's kind of it for whips right now. Like I said, I try to be pretty monogamous. I like to see progress on a specific thing and see it finished. Um, maybe next time I'll get a little more into my make nines and kind of show you my plans for the whole year but I don't want this first episode to be really, really long and like impossible to edit. So that's finished objects, that's whips. I do have some stash positions to show. I know not everybody likes to watch that. Um, I don't want anyone to ever feel like they have to like buy, buy, buy to be a knitter. So I do wanna put a warning before I get into that. Um, if you're not into stash positions, that's cool. I will hopefully see you next time. Thanks for watching this far. Um, but I do like to see those. I like to see where knitters all over the world get their fiber from, um, what colors they're into, what fibers they're interested in working with. Um, I like to see new dyers that I'm not familiar with. So um, I do like to see those. So that's what we're gonna get into right now. Um, a lot of these, both the yarns that I'm using for my whips, my finished objects, and my stash positions are semi-local to me. Um, so that I would consider that like the Midwest edge of the East Coast um, kind of dyer range. And our big yarn festival that my mom and I like to go to is called the Wool Gathering. And it's in Yellow Springs, Ohio, which is a, if you're not familiar, it's a small little kind of artsy hippie town um, outside of Dayton, so Western Ohio. And it is always at the end of September and it's just great. I think it's really my main association with the Fiber Festival. I've never been to Rhinebeck. I did live in upstate New York for two years. Um, I just didn't know that Rhinebeck existed at that time because <laughs> I was doing other stuff. I wasn't really big into knitting at that time. Um, but I haven't been to like one of the Great Lakes Fiber Festivals or the huge, you know, huge international ones. So for me, the Wool Gathering and like is my fiber festival. And I always love to go um, and find new, new local dyers. Um, so this year at the Wool Gathering, that is where I first found McMullen Fiber Co. And that is the yarn again that I used for my Zweig that I have a lot left over of that I wouldn't use for a shawl. It's also where I found um, that Allegheny fiber arts that I'm using for my helm blanket. Um, I did not buy it at the festival, but I was like scouting because Danny had already told me like what kind of color she had in mind for the baby blanket. Um, and I didn't have like a huge disposable income to drop a lot of money on yarn. Um, 
I had a very strict budget for that festival, but I was like taking pictures of dyers that I was really interested in and wanted to go back to later. Um, so same deal with my, my swag sweater. I did not buy the yarn for that at the festival. Um, I bought a couple neutral skeins from her and then I just like took pictures of the colorways that I liked for later. Um, so that's kind of background to the wool gathering. I always go in with this grand plan of like scouting through the whole tent and like looking at all that's available before I buy anything and doing a second round to go back but that never happens and it was also ungodly hot this year um we went really early but it was still like already in the mid 80s um at like 11 a.m so you don't really want to like stay and like be surrounded by sheep and wool when it's really really super hot um so I did spend my budget pretty quickly um but it's still fun to window shop and um I have no regrets about the the purchases that I did make so I got this colorway from Yoga Haney Yarns I believe that she is also from Pennsylvania, but I'm gonna double check that and I'll put it um, up to the side, but I love her colorways. And this was a one-off, it was the only skein she had, and I love it. It's called the Pyroclastic colorway, and it is a single ply fingering weight, so it holds the dye really well. You can kind of see it's, it's almost like an autumn leaves colorway. And I went into the wool gathering with a project in mind. I knew I wanted to get yarn for a specific shawl. Um, so this is set aside. It is for the Summer Night Sky Shawl by Lisa Hane from Malaya Designs. I'll put a link to her Ravelry and I'll put a picture of the finished shawl up there so you can kind of envision it. Um, but that is set aside for that. And it is one of my big nines for the year. And then I knew I needed to find a neutral colorway that would go good with that. Um, she didn't really have a lot of neutrals in her booth. And I also kind of wanted to support another dyer. Um, so in that same first tent, I found McMullen Fiberco. Again, that's the same dyer that I used for my swag. And I saw this color and it's the color smoke. It's this kind of light, tonal gray cream I would say it's on the cooler scale um but not like a deep gray it's very light and ethereal and um I love it and I think it goes really really good with this originally when I saw it at her booth it was also in a single ply um but she only had one skein of it and she did offer to do a custom dye for it um but I just didn't really want to wait. <laughs> so I went ahead and just bought it in her posh sock base, which is the 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, and even though it is applied yarn, I think it's gonna do fine with that single ply, especially since it's like the background color. I think if anything, it's gonna give a little bit of structure to it and allow that single ply to really pop. Um, and since it's not a garment, I'm not super worried about like gauge and, and drape. I just need it to, you know, work th with the amount of yarn that I have. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I have high hopes. So that was my wool gathering haul. Um, so I got those again at the end of September um, for a specific project, but that was what kind of showed me these other dyers. Um, and so with McMullen, when you sign up for her email list, you do get a um, coupon code as a new subscriber. So when I was getting the yarn for my swag and knowing that I would have some left over for a shawl, um, she had, sorry for the crinkling, she had one leftover of this Canning Collection mini skein set. So she had exactly one and I was like, I have to get it. I mean, look at it, it's beautiful. So this is a mini skein set of all the colorways from her Canyon collection. You can see there's the copper that I used um, 
as the base for my zig, and there's the Red Rock Canyon. Um, it is a little bit darker in the mini than it is on the full skein, um, so that's cool. It kind of looks almost like a different colorway. And this is my first mini skein purchase. I've never um, delved into the mini skeins. I know they're super trendy. Um, I don't really have that yarn advent kind of money someday, hopefully. Um, I would love to have a yarn advent. I think they're beautiful. I love to watch people opening them up on Instagram and see like what the fades are that these dyers have made. Um, but this was kind of my mini skein moment. And I'm really excited about it. I have big plans for this. I'm going to do the um, Brioche Adventure Shawl by Jonathan Tallo. It's another one of my make dines and... I just think that these colors are all really beautiful together. And because I do have so much yarn left over for my sweater, um, I'll have plenty of skeins to spread out in between them. Um, Cause I think that shawl calls for like 12 to 16 mini skeins and this is 12. But I think with the extras for my, my sweater, I'll be able to make a interesting gradient and, ha and have plenty of yarn for it. So I'm excited about that. And then I do have one more stash position, which I am very excited about. This was a huge treat yourself moment for me. Um, I'm very excited about it. So these are the Licka needles. If you're familiar with Licka, um, it's a Danish and Norwegian word. Um, for make happy and they're actually handmade in Nepal um, but they're known for their driftwood needles. I'm a wooden needle user. Um, I use the Knit Picks interchangeable needles that I've had for a long time um, but I've been lusting after their driftwood needles for what feels like forever because um, they're just really beautiful <laughs> um, but I couldn't really justify the purchase of another wooden interchangeable set right now since I my Knit Picks ones work fine. Um, my size 13 actually broke while I was waiting for these to arrive which was kind of a bummer but for the most part my wooden needles that I already have work fine um, so I couldn't like fully justify it to myself but if you know about Litka they just came out with this copper set so these are 100% copper needles and they are beautiful. And I really didn't have a nice metal interchangeable set. Um, I tend not to gravitate towards metal needles because I think all the ones that I've used have just been like not very nice. Um, like I used to have a nickel interchangeable set from like Joanne Fabrics that I used, you know, 50% off coupon on or whatever. And it felt really like scratchy and um, just not very like smooth in my hands and the tips weren't very sharp. And then I have like some vintage straight knitting needles from like the 60s. Um, that is what I learned on. And that was kind of my association with um, metal needles. So I was like, you know, there are certain patterns and certain yarns that really call for metal needles. It just works better. Um, I was thinking particularly of this bamboo blend that I'm using for that baby blanket. I was kind of expecting it to be super splitty and I know with a sharper tip it could be a little bit better. Um, so I did allow myself to get some zipper needles um, and I'm extremely excited about them. They come with this clear interchangeable cords um, and they're so like flexible. I know a lot of people talk about the Chiagu cords um, and I myself have not tried those yet but for me coming just from the Knit Picks ones which are fine. Knit Picks make great needles especially if you're a beginner if you're just getting started they make really really great knitting needles um, but I did notice a huge difference with this cord especially as a person who knits Magic Loop a lot. Um, the flexible cord is a real game changer and they're actually a swivel cord. I don't know if you can tell. Like I said, I'm recording on my phone, so. But the joint that the needle point attaches to and the cord itself have a rotating swivel, 
which makes a huge difference. Again, if you're a magic looper, the worst thing is when your cord gets all like kinked up off to the side. And this has been a real game changer. Um, so I am a huge fan. I love it. Plus I just like that it's clear. It just looks nice. We're all about aesthetics, you know. Um, and what I thought was cool too, the case, sorry for the Velcro sound. The case actually can sit up kind of like a pencil case. And when I first saw that, I was like, I'll never use that. And I actually use it all the time, <laughs> um, especially for my hats. Cause you know, you use a different size needle for the ribbing and then a different size for the body. And I find myself often like just having it set up like that so I can swap them in and out really quickly. Um, especially since I tend to knit a hat or two in one sitting. Um, I find that actually really helpful and nice. So that is the Licky Cipra Needles. They are 100% copper, which allegedly has health benefits, but is also just really pretty. Um, and I love it, highly recommend. So that's kind of everything for me today. Um, if you've sat through this whole entire episode, thank you so much. Um, I'm excited about it. We'll see where it goes, um, hopefully. I'll get a little smoother at transitions, less ums, a little bit more professional content to show you. Um, but I am really excited about it. And thank you for coming to this knitting podcast.